A shooting rampage in Newtown, Connecticut Friday morning left 28 people dead, including 20 six- and seven-year-olds killed inside their elementary school classrooms. The 20-year-old gunman and his mother are included in the count. Police were called to the school just after 9.30 a.m. and found the gunman dead by his own hand. The shooting is the United States' second deadliest school shooting in history after the 2007 massacre at Virginia Tech in which 33 people were killed. President Obama traveled to the grief-stricken town last night acting as comforter-in-chief for the fourth time in his presidency. God has called them all home. For those of us who remain, let us find the strength to carry on and make our country worthy of their memory. May God bless and keep those we've lost in his heavenly place. May he grace those we still have with his holy comfort. And may he bless and watch over this community and the United States of America. Advocates for tighter gun control policies say this time the president needs to do more than just grieve. They want him to make a stronger push for new laws to restrict weapons like the semi-automatic rifle used in Friday's attack. Good evening, I'm Courtney Oliver. And I'm Matthew Neese. Welcome to the James River Valley Report. A memorial service to honor the late Sergeant First Class Darren M. Lint was held Saturday at the 164th Regional Training Institute Theater on the Camp Grafton Training Center in Devil's Lake. 41-year-old Lind of Devil's Lake and 20-year-old specialist Tyler J. Orgard of Bismarck were killed in action while conducting routine clearing operations in Afghanistan on December 3rd when an explosive device struck their vehicle. Lynn's family accepted the Bronze Star Medal, the Purple Heart, and the North Dakota Legion of Merit on his behalf. He had been a full-time instructor at the Regional Training Institute before his deployment. Army National Guard Commanding General David Sprinsenetic had this to say about his fallen men. It's important that we reach out to one another during this difficult time. It's important that we continue to support each other as we remember our soldiers that have gone before us. And it's important that if we face a challenge, we ask for help because asking for help is always a sign of courage. With the holiday season upon us, the Jamestown College Choirs held their annual Christmas concert over the weekend at the Basilica of St. James. Fitting with the theme, Be Not Afraid, the concert featured pieces from the chapel and concert choirs under direction of Aaron McDermott. The program was designed to be experienced as a worship service as well as a concert with choral music and hymns intertwined with scripture readings. The presidential election has long been decided and now it is time for the states to cast their official electoral college ballots. North Dakota Lieutenant Governor Drew Wrigley presided over the meeting today as the presidential electors officially cast their votes for the nation's president and vice president. North Dakota's electors are Leighton Freeboard of Underwood, Mary Lee of Bismarck, and State Senator David Nething of Jamestown. All electors were pledged to Republican Mitt Romney based on the will of North Dakota's voters. However, President Barack Obama won a second term in the national race. The city of Williston is owed more than $360,000 from people who have used its ambulance service and not paid their bills. According to City Auditor John Kautzman, that's only part of the $434,000 bad debt crisis affecting the city. Debt is on the rise throughout the oil patch as it copes with an influx of people looking for work in the area. Hospitals are hit the hardest by uninsured people failing to pay for their treatments. Kautzman also says the city will likely collect four cents on the dollar for the ambulance debt. While the sun was out today, it still felt pretty cold. Beth Ryan is out and about on the campus to tell us what we can expect for the rest of the week when we come back. Severe weather can destroy a home in seconds. There's no time to think, only time to act. Have a kit so you're ready for any emergency. Develop a plan for what you and your family will do before disaster strikes. And stay informed during severe weather any way you can. It can be the difference between losing your possessions and losing your life. Just ask the owners of this house. Visit weather.com slash ready and let the Weather Channel help you prepare your family for emergencies. In 1977, in Johannesburg, South Africa, an eight-year-old boy picked up the game of golf from his father. By the age of nine, he was already outplaying him. The odds of this gentle lad winning the Junior World Golf Championships at the age of 14, one in 16 million. 
The odds of that same boy then making it to the US and European pro golf tours, one in seven million. The odds of the Big Easy winning the Open Championship once and the US Open Championship twice, one in 780 million. The odds of this professional golfer having a child diagnosed with autism? One in 88. Ernie Els encourages you to learn more at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Early diagnosis can make a lifetime of difference. TransCanada received permission from a judge Thursday to resume oil pipeline work on a private Texas property. A hearing will be held later this week to determine if the product the company wants to transport is crude oil. A county judge issued a temporary restraining order Friday stopping work throughout this week on the Keystone XL pipeline. Many Texas landowners are fighting the company's plan to transport Canadian tar sand oil to Gulf Coast refineries. The project has met many obstacles nationwide, including President Barack Obama's rejection of the presidential permit they require for the pipeline to cross the United States-Canadian border. Although big differences remain, there appears to be movement in talks to avoid the so-called fiscal cliff facing the nation. According to published sources, House Speaker John Boehner is offering $1 trillion in higher tax revenue over 10 years and an increase in the top tax rate on people making more than $1 million a year. He is also offering a large enough extension in the government's borrowing cap to fund the government for one year before the issue must be revisited. In return, Boehner is asking for $1 trillion in spending cuts from government benefit programs such as Social Security and Medicare. Those cuts would slash many domestic programs and the Pentagon budget by 9% starting in January. In world news, the Conservative Party is back in power in Japan after a three-year hiatus. Shinzo Abai stressed today that the road ahead will not be easy as he is trying to revive the floundering economy and boost its national security and worsening relations with China. Outgoing Prime Minister Yoshiko Noda announced his resignation later last night, acknowledging his party failed to live up to the nation's high expectations. Economic issues, including plans to raise taxes and other measures to help Japan's underperforming economy, were the top concerns among voters. Venezuelan President Hugo octubre, Chavez's allies were a sweeping días, victory in the country's gubernatorial elections mixta yesterday, Pekín, capturing a large majority of Chavez's movement won 20 of 23 state governorships, according to results by the Electoral Council. Enrique Capriles lost to Chavez in the country's October presidential election, but his re-election as governor yesterday will allow him to cement his position as Venezuela's dominant opposition leader. The 53% voter turnout was considerably lower than the more than 80% who cast ballots in October's vote when Chavez won another six-year term. Well, turning to weather, Jessica Golseth is off this week, but our own Beth Ryan has been outstanding as of late. Outstanding in the cold, that is. Beth, how does it feel out there? It's a gloomy 20 degrees out right now, and we've had a few flurries today. We're looking at some more snow in the coming days. Tonight, there's a 30% chance of precipitation with a low of 15 degrees and southeast winds. Tomorrow, there's again a 30% chance of snow and some expected wind gusts of about 20 miles per hour. About 26 degrees tomorrow with a low of negative 11 degrees with continued snow and wind. Wednesday, we are looking at 18 degrees with wind at 18 miles per hour and a low of 2 degrees. Thursday, it should be sunny with 13 degrees and a low of 2 degrees. Friday is again sunny with 20 degrees and a low of 3. Saturday will again be bright and sunny but only 11 degrees with a low of negative 1 degrees. Sunday again will be around 11 degrees. We are looking at about an inch or so of snow between now and Wednesday morning. It's finally looking like a North Dakota winter with snow that's finally sticking to the ground. The cold weather is perfect with the holidays just around the corner. Well, Beth, your cheeks look maybe a little bit rosy. Is it really that cold out there? You know, it's a pretty cold 20 degrees outside, but it's not windy, so the walk isn't too bad from class to class. So you're saying maybe bundle up a little bit? Bundle up, but it should still be a pretty nice walk outside. And this weekend, is the driving looking pretty good? You know, it should be okay. It should be all right for going home for the holidays, but anytime you're driving in the winter, you need to be cautious and prepared. 
Well, definitely. Well, thank you very much, Beth, for being with us today and bringing yeah. us the weather. Thanks, Matt. And after the break, Josh Knudsen has sports, and Courtney Oliver tells us about some local houses all dressed up for the holidays. Mom, can I have a dollar? I think my purse is upstairs on the bed. It's not here. Check the dining room. No, the upstairs closet. Moms everywhere are finding ways to keep kids active and healthy. Get ideas, get involved, get going at letsmove.gov. It was a relatively quiet weekend in Jimmy Sports this past week, but our own Josh Knutson is here to tell us what else went on in the sports world. Josh, I know my Vikings put up another win. What else is going on? Well, Courtney, things are starting to wind down before Christmas break and finals. We had a couple of basketball games, but not much else is going on. The Jimmy's men's basketball team was defeated 61-56 Saturday evening by Dickinson State. The Jimmys fell into the halftime with a 30-24 deficit, but unlike many times before, they were unable to complete the comeback. The Jimmys found themselves down by as many as 12 points in the second half. The Jimmys were able to cut the lead to 4 points with 10.43 left in the game, but Dickinson State was able to pull away by double digits with 4.36 left in the game and would eventually hold on for the victory. Mark Hogue led the Jimmies with 20 points, followed by Devin Thomas with 10. The 11th ranked Jimmies women's basketball team cruised to their 11th win of the year on Friday when they defeated Presentation College 92-63. The Jimmies were able to use their size advantage in the game, not only on the offensive side of the ball, but also in the rebounding game. The Jimmies out-rebounded Presentation 50-24. The Jimmies were also very efficient from the floor, making 52% of their shots. Bridget Schooneman led the Jimmies in scoring with 18, and Kayla Remick was the other Jimmy in double figures with 12. The women's basketball team again was in action on Saturday when they traveled to Grand Forks to face off against the University of North Dakota. Early on in the game, it looked like the Jimmies might be able to pull off the upset. With 11.30 left to go in the first half, the Jimmies were ahead 19-12 and took a 26-25 lead into the halftime break. However, UND responded in the second half with a 10-1 run that put them up by 5. UND's full court press proved to be the problem for the Jimmies as well, who ended up with 29 turnovers at the end of the game. UND also was able to get to the free throw line much more than the Jimmies. UND was 21 for 31 compared to Jamestown 6 to 12. Carly Jensen led the team in scoring with 15 and Bridget Schooneman added 10 points as well. And Adrian Peterson did come to play on Sunday. The Minnesota Vikings running back ran for a season best 212 yards on 24 carries in a 36-22 victory against the St. Louis Rams. Peterson had a career season this year, rushing for a total of 1,812 yards, which is only 249 shy of the NFL single season record of 2,105. Vikings quarterback Christian Ponder also had a decent game, going 17 for 24 for 134, 31 yards and no interceptions. Blair Walsh went 5 for 5 on field goals as well. The Vikings are now 8 and 6 on the season and still in the playoff picture. And that wraps up a really short weekend in sports, Courtney. Well, I hope those Vikings do make it to the playoffs. They're still in the hunt. <laughs> All right, well, thanks, Josh. In the recent greeting card national customer engagement campaign, post offices across the nation had the chance to win gift cards from Sunrise Greetings and Hallmark for meeting sales goals. Locally, the Jamestown Post Office was selected as a winner. Instead of using the $200 prize towards bettering their office, the staff bought gifts for the annual Salvation Army Angel Tree Program. Ten girls and boys will have a more cheerful holiday season this year as a result. And before we go, we bring you these local houses all dressed up for the coming holidays. Some homes had their Christmas light displays up just after Thanksgiving. One residence even had directions for Santa in case he forgets where to go Christmas Eve night. And that's the James River Valley Report for this Monday, December 17th. For everyone here at JCTV 16, we wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We'll see you again the week of January 14th. I'm Courtney Oliver. Thanks for joining us. Good night.